Please. Mr. Wexler? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscombe? Here. Mr. Gone? Here. Mr. McGon? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes. Um, prior to third order, I uh, just break the, the agenda or change the agenda a little bit. Um, Mayor Courtright is with us, and um, I would like to ask him if he would please come to the podium. Welcome. Thank you. I, I appreciate Welcome, you letting me in now. I know you got a, a hectic schedule tonight, busy schedule. I just wanted to come and congratulate everybody that just recently won the election. Uh, I, want, I think we're going to have a really good working relationship between my office and you people here. I think we're going to work well, try to move the city ahead. And I just want to say I wish you all the best. And anything I could do to help, please feel free to come and ask. But congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. And just one thing, Mayor, your cabinet heads have been excellent too as far as response to to all of us okay. in our department. we hope that it continues in that in that manner we need to have a good working relationship between each and every one of us thank, thank you. you so and, much and again i i think that you know that you are welcome at our meetings at any time all right um in the future it's, it's easier out here than there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to be back thank thanks you. again Take thank you thank you thank you Third order, 3A, Minutes of the Scranton Housing Authority's regular meeting held December 2nd, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B, breakdown of the eligible salaries for the liquid fuels account for the months of October, November, and December 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, minutes of the regular meeting of the Composite Pension Board, held on Wednesday, December 11, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Any clerk's notes, Mrs. Reed? No, Mr. McGough. Thank you. Fourth order, citizens' participation. Uh, prior to citizens' participation and uh, a couple of couple of things. Um, first, any questions that any citizens may have, um, I would ask that they please be put into writing and given to the clerk so that uh, it, it's not meant to be punitive any, in any way. It, it really facilitates us getting a response back to you. Um, it will, your questions will be given to the appropriate chair and, and then directed to the appropriate departments um, within the city. Uh, and that will be helpful to us and I'm, I think to you. Uh, the second thing I would like to mention is there were some questions um, last week uh, that were brought up. One of them concerning why it was a, an acting fire chief. Uh, the explanation that we received is that given the, uh, the salary in the 2014 budget, uh, the administration was unable to find an adequate replacement at that salary. And that what they thought was the best solution was to name an acting chief. 
Uh, Mr. DeSarno, who was uh, appointed, is a member of the bargaining unit in the Scranton Fire Department and will remain a member of the bargaining unit. He will collect his salary as a member of the bargaining unit and also will, remember, will remain an active member of the fire department, which also um, does not require hiring a replacement for that position. Uh, I am told that there will be an, there is an ongoing attempt to fill the position um, at the salary, but that uh, Mr. DeSarno will be in that position until such time as there is a permanent replacement. And I should mention that at that time, uh, or during that period of time, that the salary of the fire chief is not being paid to anyone. And so there is a, a moderate savings to the city um, during this period of time. And there was one other thing, and I'm forgetting. But uh, I may remember by fifth order. But um, if anyone does have any you know, questions uh, about that, please. Uh, first speaker is Andy Spiraglia. <coughs> Andy Spraglia, to the Scranton Fellows Grantonians. Good evening. I didn't speak too much last week. I want to give you a little breathing room. I'm glad the Chamber has decided to uh, hold out a helping hand. <coughs> But for some reason or other, my mother's voice keeps coming back to me. Beware of Greeks bearing gifts. <laughs> I don't know if they're looking for a KOZ again, because there's a good chance that's going to come up again. And before you even think about a KOZ, you should make that, if one should ever go through, incorporate it with a commuter tax. Because without that, it's just all you're doing is taking away producing properties with no benefit to the city. We had a KOZ. And I don't know, well, I guess maybe you just, probably none of you even think about it, but we had one. And when we went through and checked to see who oversaw this KOZ, we were told, once it's done, it's done. Nobody gives a darn about it other than the people who got the KOZ. So hence, there's no check on this thing. So before you even think about a KOZ, you think about a commuter tax. So we're going to get something out of it. If we're going to lose taxes, we got to make up taxes. We can't go by like it was. The majority of your councilman has been there for four years. And in them four years, the only thing we received from you is on our tax hike. You didn't solve a bit of problems. The problems are all there and it continually got worse. You cannot use the solutions you used. You got to look for a new solution to the city's problems because all they are is becoming deeper and deeper. You can't even get, I read in the paper where, where you asked if they took away that money that we were putting into the pension fund. Was it completed? Paper says there were still two million short. I assume that's true. So we didn't really get that out of the way either. You can ask about it. That was your minimal pension requirements. We we're six some million. They only gave like four million, and we're two point two million short. You're correct, Mr. Spray. It wasn't a full payment. It was a partial payment. Right. So here we are, still with them problems. That other problem, I don't know what you're going to do with. I told you before, the best thing to let the Unions foreclose on our properties and then lease them back and try to st stop that 21 or 22 or 23 million by now. You got to remember, for every month that goes by, we get tacked on another $100,000. And this has been going on for almost six months. So look at, look at that, it's $600,000 more the citizens of Scranton got to pay. You got to do something. 
either twist the arms of the people on them boards or do something. But it's got to be done. And the sooner you get it done, the better for all of us. Because other than that, the only thing we can look forward to is higher taxes. The unions were looking for another 22% tax increase on our thing to pay for that bond issue. To go to the courts, they wanted the courts to get, give them the authority, the courts of city, to borrow that 22 or 23 million and then tack it on to a 22 or 23 percent tax hike. We already had this. Believe me, I don't relish the position you're in. When them people get them tax notice, all they're going to think of is Rogan, Lascombe, and a few of the members of council. Of course, most of them, the other two are gone. But you three are still there. And it's just too bad you're going to take the brunt of it. And I know you're going to take the brunt of it. People are already mad. And they're asking why. They seem to think that I have answers. I don't have <laughs> answers. No one has answers. The bankruptcy was an answer. It wasn't a viable answer, but it was an answer. But whether we wanted to go that far or not, nobody wanted to do it. Which I'm not saying good or bad, because I'm on pension. And I hate to see what would happen to people that are on pension. That's the only thing I was against the bankruptcy, even the thought of it, is all the people that, that are on pensions that did what they had to do. You can't do nothing with the union contract for three years. Then the only thing you can do is bring them in line to what the other people are you having. You can't retire before you're 55 and things like that. Thank you. And Thank you. Uh, Mr. Spiraglia, may I uh, commend you on your television appearance? <laughs> uh, but there were some other uh, prior to uh, there were two other things that I did want to mention and I'm sorry that uh, I'm interrupting um, 5J on the agenda is the appointment of Mrs. Arian uh, Slocum uh, Mrs. Slocum has declined that appointment but since it was on the agenda it will be read into the um, record and uh, you know during fifth order and the other one 5d uh, does require a little explanation perhaps um, that's on parking meters uh, in the budget as we discussed last year there was a suggestion or it was put in to raise the parking meter fee from a dollar and a quarter to a dollar fifty but apparently the legislation from last year that raised it from a dollar to a dollar and a quarter it was never approved. It was put on hold and then bypassed. And so that the increase this year is, will be from the, the quarter increase for the parking meters per hour will go from a dollar to a dollar and a quarter, not from a dollar and a quarter to a dollar fifty. Okay? I hope that's adequate explanation. Mr. Courtright, did you want to? Mayor Courtright, uh, you're good. Um, Joan Hedonowitz. Uh, Joan Hodowanitz. Good evening. I'm sorry on the pronunciation. That's all right. I get that all the time. Um, first, I want to congratulate Mayor Courtright for coming here. It's such a pleasant surprise. All right, um, with respect to 5F, approving the financing by the Scranton-Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority with certain capital projects for the benefit of Marywood University, a Pennsylvania not-for-profit corporation, et cetera. I seem to remember uh, over the years a lot of complaints about the University of Scranton, another Pennsylvania not-for-profit corporation, and how difficult it was to get them to pay what would be an appropriate payment in lieu of taxes. I am very curious, has Marywood University in its nearly 100 year history ever made a payment in lieu of taxes? I am not aware of a monetary 
contribution? Okay, and I know they make an economic impact just as the University of Scranton does. But I can remember, I, you would have thought that the University of Scranton was the great Satan of downtown Scranton. And I'm wondering, you know, are we going to have a separate standard for Marywood University? I know that uh, these capital projects, the city's not going to incur any obligation to repay. I understand that. But, and there's no additional properties being taken off the tax rolls, but we nearly crucified the University of Scranton. Uh, everybody recalls the history of Leahy Hall and how that went down. Okay, that was an embarrassment. My only comment on this is if we're going to hold the University of Scranton to standard X, then we have to do the same with Marywood University and any of the other schools. It's got to have one standard. And I'd like to see what your reasoning would be on this when you get into motions. The second one is acting Fire Chief uh, DeSarno. I'm very happy that you were able to clarify uh, what happened there. But it is also my understanding that Mr. DeSarno made $65,602 last year, and that's what he will be paid this year. I'm here to tell you that a fire chief is worth every penny of that and more. And in the event you cannot find a candidate willing, an, an appropriate candidate willing to do the job for $50,000, when the first priority is on the 2015 budget, should be getting that salary in the range where it belongs. I know the city's strapped for cash and for funding, uh, but you get what you pay for sometimes. And I think that that's only appropriate. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Any other speakers? Good evening, Marie Schumacher, taxpayer. Good evening. Uh, first of all, a follow-up from last week when I asked what, whether the uh, loan that Mr. Judge spoke of last December was executed on the 3rd or at any time, $17 million, nobody knew. Do you have that answer this week? Uh, yes, it was executed and I didn't look. We did receive from uh, the, the new business administrator a breakdown of costs. Um, for that, I do not have it. I don't believe I have that with me. Um, I can provide you with that information. Yes, I would appreciate that. Mr. McGough? Yes. Uh, Mr. Malzoni provided me the information that the, the, uh, the TAN was for the amount of $12,500,000 from IFS Securities. I thought it. I thought the, the agreement last December was $17 million. Not to be more than $17 million. And so you're saying it's $12? 12, $12,500,000. 12 and what is the interest rate and what are the fees? Uh, I believe the interest rate is, at, in the end, is going to be about 9%. And the fees to so complete is around $574,000. That's a far cry from the four and a half percent that I believe was the ceiling when it was discussed and prior to being voted on. That's very disappointing and it's also uh, doesn't speak well for our credit position and what we're going to look forward to going forward. Not when uh, the Scranton School District is at 1.19 percent. So it's, this is why we are in the, in the process of getting our financial house in order. Uh, we are paying a high a high expense to for financing. Okay. Now, with respect to uh, the acting uh, acting fire chief, um, I don't like what you're doing at all. Uh, I don't know. I've never seen it advertised in the paper. Granted, I'm not so looking for jobs. I where what has the how has that position been advertised? 
I don't think it needs to be advertised that it's, a point, it's an appointed position by the administration. Well, but if, if we're looking, if we're truly looking for somebody, how long is there an, extension, uh, an expiration on how long is this going to be acting? I mean, let's face it, there is a difference between management and labor. Um, uh, the other question uh, that I have and how it will impact this, in, in May the SAFER grant uh, is a second birthday and expires. And that's uh, 30 firefighters. Have we renewed uh, an application for the SAFER grant? Has it been approved or are we going to drop 30, uh, 30 firefighters? And uh, we were promised as taxpayers a full-time fire chief. I think it's, I happen to believe it's a full-time job or it should be. And I am very disappointed in this and I, I think uh, uh, this is just not good at all. Um, and what about the what about these uh, our 30, 30 firefighters that were added? Uh, are we going to start closing fire stations again? Is that why nothing's been done to improve the East Mountain uh, fire station, which needs repairs dra dramatically? And have not is it because it's going to be closed again in in May, Mr. Lascom? I, I don't think that'll be the case. Uh, I do believe that there is a, a new application for a new safer grant. Um, if I'm not mistaken, in our financials over the past year and the current budget, uh, we had anticipated that, and that, that's part of the, the tax increases and stuff like that to, to maintain the department that we have. As far as you're mentioning um, a full-time chief, he is a full-time chief. Acting is just a, a title. He's but, still there on a, on a 24 hour basis, but basically. He, but he's being a firefighter. He's not being a manager. No, and he's being he's a, manager. He's a, a manager. He's in the function. office and in, in fire can't headquarters. Do, you can do one or the other. You can't be doing both at the same time. That's what the That's, taxpayers were promised. And I think we deserve to have that. Um, Back again to something from last week, and, and I will revisit that in the future, I'm sure. Uh, I had asked, as had others, for the amount of tax dollars that had been poured into the North Scranton Intermediate School to date. Did anybody get those? Um, you had two questions, actually. On, I had, on, we, yeah, that's right. one. I've got three um, tonight, actually. Um, regarding the total amount of tax dollars, I spoke to Ms. Abley today. Um, she said that she would have that answer for us next week, um, but she did confirm that there was a $2 million um, influx that was mentioned at the council meeting, I believe, by a speaker in 1998 um, when Congressman McDade was able to, to get that money for the project. Um, but she, she promised me a more complete answer by next week. And regarding the partnership, um, this is from Attorney Hickey. Um, there are two partners. The general partner is 1539 North Main GP Inc., an affiliate, an affiliate of Goodwill. And the investor limited partner is Wells Fargo Affordable Housing Community Development Corporation. And I could provide you a copy of that as well if you uh, like. Yes, I would like that because I did go, go home and look to see uh, who the, uh, the, well, who are the principals? Um, in the in the Wells Fargo, is that somebody local? Um, I I didn't ask for the principals. I just because asked for the partnership. And what um, Wells Fargo is what? Because then when you go uh, and you look up the the fifteen thirty LP, it's the same address as Goodwill, nine hundred block of right. Prospect Avenue. Right. And yeah. why would a lease? I don't understand why a lease would uh, why they would. Well, lease it, something out to themselves. Well, it does say that they are affiliates. Um, how they have their inner workings, I, I'm not sure of, um, but we could certainly ask. I would, uh, I would certainly appreciate that. And um, okay, and that's the fire chief. Three um, B uh, tonight. Uh, what accounts for the drop? from 2012 through 2013? I do not know. Okay, who's, who's, 
what uh, I don't know what committee that would come under, but I is that revenue item? Would that be uh, Mr. Wexler or? Okay. We want to, uh, it, it, I, I will find out. Okay. Uh, 4G. Is that a total payment for the year or is that a partial payment? Um, the grant for the recycling, recycling grant. Uh, maybe you find out if it's a partial payment. I would certainly like to know what the other payments uh, were made. And um, I guess my time's up. I will be back next week, good Lord Thank willing. You. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Schumacher, you gave me one question that you didn't ask me that I got the answer, so I want to make sure I get credit for my homework. <laughs> Uh, one of the questions that you asked last week was about the projections on revenue. Um, from the, this is from the, I think it's Berkheimer, provided this to uh, Dave Bolzoni. Uh, they estimated that collections in- of Mr. Wetzler, yes. put your microphone on. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought my mouth was big enough, sorry. Um, the EIT was expected to be in 2013 between $25.5 million and $25.6 million. The EIT collection rate uh, for 2014 is expected to be between 22.5 and 23 million. Um, and Mr. Balzoni feels comfortable that with that, uh, they projected the EIT at 23.4 in the budget. So they're comfortable with the projections from Berkheimer that it will meet the projections from the proposed budget. But I, I had asked if Yeah, if the spike that was in for this year, and actually you're telling me now it's a, it's a decline from the prior yes, year? Yes, because they, uh, okay. it, it was okay, a spike so because of so last year. Okay, so that spike was removed and they are admitting that that is yes. the reason. Okay. Yes. Thank you. But the projection is, the projection for a collection and the projection in the budget match. Okay, thank okay. you. Anyone else? Mr. Dobson? Good evening, Council. Dave Dobson, resident. Good evening. Um, last week I mentioned about the uh, PPML trans lines at NAOG. Uh, next week I'll try and uh, submit a copy uh, from the computer uh, on that question. And if not, if I don't get an answer from there, I'll pursue it with the uh, right to know, maybe in City Hall. Um, also, uh, I'd like to note that the actions of PPNL last weekend were unacceptable. We have one fireman that was lost his life and another one that was seriously injured uh, due to electricity uh, problems and them not getting to the fire on time. It took about an hour for PPNL to get to the fire and uh, somebody got a shock inside the house and they shut down the whole situation and they basically lost the house. They could have prevented a lot, a lot of damage. So uh, hopefully PPNL will come to the bat. Um, and a lot of uh, in prior meetings uh, that we should follow Detroit. Last weekend on CNN there was a, a little documentary on Detroit and the commentator, uh, the journalist stated that Detroit puts him most in mind of Chernobyl. It's the closest thing he's seen to Chernobyl. So, I mean, our city doesn't really look like Chernobyl. So I think we're a little ahead of the game from Detroit. They owe billions of dollars, not millions. And uh, once again, I'd like to mention that the unions should have attempts made from the new mayor, and and uh, I see we're hiring a uh, uh, somebody with uh, relations uh, for public relations with the uh, unions, uh, labor relations, and uh, see if anything could be negotiated to start making payments to them instead of, uh, for instance, sale of the sewer plant. Uh, 
you know, you're going to have a legacy, and the younger guys up there uh, have more, should pay more attention to this also. Uh, uh, you might want to run for a higher office someday, and if uh, my typical sewer bill is $35 a month, $70 or so every two months, what if it goes up to $100 a month, like Scott Township or whatever, and it's all basically corporate uh, nonsense where uh, you have CEOs taking home millions every year and what have you. So it's something to consider. And uh, one of the things on, on recycling, I like to keep quick bringing this subject up, but uh, that list I gave last week was a big expansion and I'd like to note that a lot of plastics and paper are starting to be sold off to China and exported out of the country. So uh, it's also a, a possible way for, you know, cash to be raised by recycle centers. And uh, you're not paying for a bunch of rain-soaked newspapers tipping fees up at the landfill. And I'll try and reprint that, and I don't re really want to keep mentioning that. And uh, a few months ago, I started uh, reading this, this person's <laughs> books, and I'm going to read it for the new council. What began as an effort by Kentucky to help a single company in Appalachia raise capital by keeping state income taxes withheld from its workers' paychecks has grown to more than 2,700 companies in 19 states when this book was first published. The big banks, car makers, insurers, and the host of Canadian, Chinese, European, Japanese companies all get to profit by pocketing their taxes withheld from their American workers' paychecks. Since the fine print came out in hardback, two more states have joined this trend, Oregon and Pennsylvania. I wonder if that had anything to do with us being asked if we expected manna from heaven. They're talking about raising state income taxes uh, uh, in lieu of uh, um, property tax payments, and uh, um, it doesn't make sense if they're giving the original taxes away. It really does not make sense. And don't forget, I called my congressman this week on trade packs. I'm going to try and look up the White House and tell them to take their trade packs and keep them. We don't need any more unemployment. They don't want to pay the people that are un unemployed now. We lost 50,000 factories since 2000, or, uh, 1992. Thank you, and have a good night. 50,000 factories. Thank you. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? This is Reed. Fifth order, 5A motions. Mr. Wexler. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I had a couple of things that uh, I was going to discuss, but while we were in caucus, uh, we're going to try to stick with uh, the fact that each councilman will try to stay in their in their area of uh, responsibility. But the one thing that I do want to mention is I'd like to congratulate the uh, the DPW for their work on Saturday in the last uh, snowstorm. Um, there was some problems with equipment um, that was not available, so they were a little slower uh, in response, but they did do a great job. And I am of the understanding that the administration is uh, working on improvements to make it better in the next event. That's all I have right now. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wexler. Mr. Rogan? Yes, I'll be very brief as well. Um, I, I would just like to congratulate another city department, our, our fire department, um, with their response to the fire in West Scranton um, <laughs> over the last week. And I, I'm only a few blocks from there myself. And you could, just from where I was, you could see how, how terrible of a fire that was. And, and them and Chief DeSarno, they did a, a great job saving the, the building next door. And I know Mr. Laskin is going to elaborate on on all those events as well. Um, one other issue I, I just wanted to bring up very briefly, and I, I think I've talked about this at council almost every meeting for, for a year or two, and that's uh, Senate Bill 76. Um, I did reach out to some of the folks um, at the Pennsylvania Realtors Association who were involved with 
um, the creation of the bill and, and trying to pass the bill. Um, and, I, and I asked my colleagues in the caucus and they agreed to hold, that we could hold an information session um, for the public. So I will be working on um, getting those participants together and letting my colleagues in our office know and we can have that here in front of the public um, and have it on TV as well. That way the, the public can know exactly what's in this bill um, that has been talked about so much and, and how it would affect them in reducing their property taxes. Um, that's all I have for now. I have a couple comments on some of the agenda items as they come up. And uh, I, well, actually one other thing, I would like to thank Mayor Courtright for coming today. Um, after four years of, of <laughs> not seeing the mayor in, in council chambers more than once, it is very refreshing and I hope it's something that will continue. And as um, I believe it was Mr. McGough or one of my colleagues mentioned that the, all the department heads have been great to work with um, in City Hall, we really have seen for those of us who have been on the board, um, we have seen a change and it's, it's very refreshing to, to have that openness and it, I hope it's something that will continue amongst the five of us on council and uh, between council and the administration. And that's all for tonight. And I must apologize to Mr. Loscom. I, I did ask if you would mention about the, the fire department prior to, uh, and, and I apologize to all, I skipped over any announcements or things oh. from council again. Uh, I'm going to have to start <laughs> writing these down. <laughs> Mr. Lasker? Um, yeah, as Mr. Rogan stated, uh, we did have a devastating fire on uh, 1300 block of Price Street this week. And I do want to applaud the firefighters for their, their great response there under the conditions they were fighting the fire. Um, the house right next door was very close. They were able to save that house. Unfortunately, due to circumstances with the electrical power, as has been stated in the newspaper, um, there's probably a little bit more damage to that property than, than need be. Uh, the response time for PP&L was unacceptable. Where the blame goes, it's hard to say at this point. There's, there's uh, there's been a few meetings and there'll be some more uh, coming up next week on trying to rectify this situation from, from ever happening again. Um, you know, I can understand delays based on weather, or different circumstances, but uh, you know, an hour delay is, is beyond comprehension. I was involved in a similar electrical situation Captain Robeson, uh, we had lost a few years ago due to an electrical situation. So it plays on the minds of, of the, the current firefighters uh, whenever there are, there's live wires in, in a structure. And in this particular case, they were making a good advance till uh, they realized the property was energized when one of the firefighters came in contact with an aluminum window. But, um, you know, they made a valiant effort to save the property and I believe, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, looking at the property, there's a lot of damage, but I think it is structurally uh, able to be reconstructed. I would hope so. But there are some ongoing meetings, and I will update you on those as far as the um, commitment from PPL to, to respond quicker, what, what their uh, remedies are going to be and how we could all work together and, and eliminate any problems in the future. Uh, I thought these problems were resolved prior, but it, it seems like after a while everything is forgotten and it goes back to a, a certain way. Um, I hope it's not all about the, the dollar and stuff like that, but like I said, uh, we can't point the finger at anybody in particular at this point. I just hope there is a resolution to the benefit of everyone uh, for the future. And um, again, I do commend the guys for doing the job they've done and, and to be able to have saved what they have saved in that uh, particular situation. But I do feel confident that uh, our talks with PPL and, and some other uh, people involved at this point that uh, there will be a, a resolution that I think will, will work for everyone. And I'm hopeful on that. And that's all I have to say at this time. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Laskin. Mr. Gaunt? Yes. Um, I'd also like to thank Mayor Courtright for coming tonight. Uh, I appreciate that, as do uh, all of my colleagues. I'd also like to say, as some of my other colleagues had mentioned, uh, my sympathy goes out to the family that um, lost their home on Price Street in Scranton. That was a terrible tragedy. Um, I don't have any other comments. I will be, um, I do have a couple questions still on 7-H, so I'll reserve my comments until then. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gawain. Um Good evening. Uh, a couple of uh, notes uh, administratively, I guess, uh, information. There will be a um, an opening of bids for legal services, special labor, labor council for the city of Scranton. That will be held on Wednesday, February 5th at 10 a.m. here in council chambers. As you may have seen in the paper, it was announced that the city is looking to hire a, an additional special labor council um, to deal with, obviously, contracts and as such, um, and, and also with the uh, funding for the um, arbitration awards. Uh, second one, the also proposals in council chambers for the independent audit of the Scranton Single Tax Office. That will be held on Friday, February 21st at 10 a.m. in city council chambers. Uh, we also did receive some information um, concerning the audit for the city audit for 2013, um, Rossi and Rossi, I believe, or Robert Rossi and Company are again doing the audit, the the city audit, and I know uh, the new business administrator has um, suggested some um, procedural changes that may expedite. Um, the budget process, and uh, we will be getting more information um, concerning that. Um, also, just a, a final reminder that um, any questions that citizens may have, um, please uh, put those in writing to, and, um, to the city clerk so that we can act upon them. Um, and just a few brief comments. Uh, yes, uh, I, I also would like to thank uh, Mayor Courtright for his appearance here. And uh, the mayor and I uh, discussed uh, some issues uh, concerning appearances at council. And one of the things that had been suggested in the past, I know, and that we've all would really appreciate, would be. Um, appearance of department chairs or um, department heads uh, if there is any legislation that needs explanation and I have been assured by I've spoken to most of the department heads and also as I said with the mayor and they have been more than conciliatory in saying that that would that they would do that uh, that they would come either to a caucus or to to a general meeting uh, to, you know, to discuss legislation that is going to be presented to us. Uh, and, and I am thankful for that. That will go a long way toward um, a, a better understanding of what's going on uh, process-wise and government-wise. And that is all. I do have some comments as we get to legislation. Um, but that is all I have for this evening. Thank you. 5B, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials of the city of Scranton to accept and disperse grant funds from the Walmart Foundation in the amount of $2,000 to purchase toys and coats from the Scranton Police Department's annual toy coat drive. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 
5C, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to extend the deadline for the discount period on real estate taxes from February 28th, 2014 to March 31st, 2014, in order to allow taxpayers ample time to pay real estate taxes at the discount rate. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. Yes, on the question. I would just like to reiterate, I'm very happy to vote for this legislation. This is something I fought very hard for um, unsuccessfully in 2013 when um, the county commissioners wouldn't agree to go along. Um, this year, all the taxing bodies have agreed to go along to, to make things a little bit easier on the taxpayers. So like once again, I'd like to thank our commissioners and our school directors and uh, the mayor's office and the tax collector's office. It was a, a group effort to be able to extend this discount um, and it will make it a little bit easier for some individuals to get in at those reduced rates. Uh, one other mention, uh, so that this can coincide with the passage of the other taxing ordinances, um, we may be asking next week that this be put to seventh order so that the taxing tax bills can go out with a notice that uh, there is an extension of the um, the discount rate. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Ayes have it and so moved. 5D, amending file of the council number 100-2009, an ordinance amending file of council number 91-2002, an ordinance as amended providing for the establishment of parking meter zones within the city of Scranton, establishing hours of operation, providing for the installation of meters and parking meter rates, authorizing the enforcement of parking ordinances, and providing penalties for violations thereof. By amending sections 3A, to reflect the change in hourly rate at parking meters from $1 to $1.25 per hour. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. Second. I'm sorry. <laughs> On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5E, amending resolution number 604-1999, entitled Authorizing the Mayor and Other Appropriate City Officials to Execute and Enter into a Collective Bargaining Agreement between E.B. German Lodge Number 2 of the Fraternal Order of Police and the City of Scranton for the calendar years January 1, 1996 to December 31, 2002, in order to amend Article 26, Section 7, per a memorandum of agreement between the parties. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5E be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5F, approving the financing by the Scranton Lackawanna Health and Welfare Authority of certain capital projects for the benefit of Marywood University, a Pennsylvania not-for-profit corporation, declaring that it is desirable for the health, safety, and welfare of the people of the city of Scranton, Lackawanna County, Pennsylvania, and the area served by Marywood University to have the project provided by and financed through the authority. Designating the mayor of the city or, in his absence, the president or vice president of the city council as the person to act on behalf of the city council as the applicable elected representative within the meaning of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as amended, authorizing such mayor of the city or the president or vice president of the city council of the city to take certain actions on behalf of the city council of the city as such applicable elected representative and authorizing other necessary and appropriate action. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5F be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. Um, just to a, a, a personal um, response to questions or to comments that were made um, during citizens' participation. Um, I personally 
um, like to, would like to encourage any development that can take place within the city and that is a positive good for the city. Um, as has been done in the past, as long as it is within the, um, it, it, as long as it is within the kind of confines of not removing buildings from uh, the tax base, uh, it, it, as long as it, I guess as long as it provides a positive good to the city, I, I think it's something that I personally would encourage. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5G, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to accept grant funds from the Department of Environmental Protection, DEP, Act 101 Recycling Program Performance Grant in the amount of $58,665 for the City of Scranton Recycling Program. At this time, I will entertain a motion that item 5G be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5H, accepting a donation of $4,000 from the Scranton Area Foundation presented to the City of Scranton Fire Department. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5H be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5I, accepting a donation of $100 from Anthracite Heritage Museum and Iron Furnaces Associates presented to the City of Scranton Fire Department. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5I be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, just like to thank the Anthracite Heritage Museum and Iron Furnaces Associates for their donation. All those in favor of introduction, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 5J, appointment of Ariane N. Slocum, 2104 North Washington Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18509, as chairperson of the Civil Service Commission, effective January 17th, 2014. Ms. Slocum's term will expire with the term of Mayor William L. Courtright. At this time, I'll entertain a motion to item 5J be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Oh, I'm sorry. This, this For is lack of a second, as, as I was stated before, Mrs. Slocum <laughs> is unable to uh, fulfill this appointment. And for lack of a second, the motion is denied. 5K, appointment of Paul Duffy, 811 Colfax Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18510, to the Civil Service Commission, effective January 17th, 2014. Mr. Duffy's term will expire with the term of Mayor William L. Corwright. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5K be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question. All those in favor of introduction, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Eyes have it and so moved. 5L, appointment of Jeff Mackey, 1422 West Gibson Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, to the Civil Service Commission, effective January 17th, 2014. Mr. Mackey's term will expire with the term of Mayor William L. Corwright. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5L be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, reading by title, file of the council number one, 2014, an ordinance amending file of the council number six, 1976, entitled an ordinance as amended, imposing a tax for general revenue purposes on the transfer of real property situated within the city of Scranton, prescribing and regulating the method of evidencing the payment of such tax, conferring <coughs> powers and imposing duties upon certain persons, and providing penalties by imposing the rate of the realty transfer tax at two and nine tenths percent for calendar year 2014. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. 
Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so move. 6B, reading by title, file of the council number 2, 2014, an ordinance, amending file of the council number 7, 1976, entitled, an ordinance as amended, imposing a mercantile license tax of two mills for the year 1976, and annually thereafter upon persons engaging in certain occupations and businesses therein, providing for its levy and collection and for the issuance of mercantile licenses, conferring and imposing powers and duties upon the tax collector of the city of Scranton, and imposing penalties by imposing the mercantile license tax at one mill for the calendar year 2014. You've heard reading by title of item 6B. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6B pass reading by title. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 6C, reading by title, file of the council number 3, 2014, an ordinance, amending file of the council number 8, 1976, entitled an ordinance as amended, providing for the general revenue by imposing a tax at the rate of two mills upon the privilege of operating or conducting business in the city of Scranton as measured by the gross receipts therefrom, requiring registration and payment of the tax as condition to the conducting of such business providing for the levy and collection of such tax, prescribing such requirements for returns and records, conferring powers and duties upon the tax collector, and imposing penalties by imposing the business privilege tax at the rate of one mil for the calendar year 2014. You've heard reading by title of item 6C. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6C pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 6D, reading by title, file of the council number 4, 2014, an ordinance, amending file of the council number 100, 1976, entitled an ordinance as amended, levying general and special taxes for the fiscal year 1977 by setting the millage for the year 2014. You've heard reading by title of item 6D. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6D pass reading by title. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 6E, reading by title, file of the council number 5, 2014, an ordinance, amending file of the council number 17, 1994, entitled an ordinance as amended, authorizing the governing body of the city of Scranton to enact a waste disposal and collection fee for the purpose of raising revenue to cover the waste disposal and collection costs incurred by the city of Scranton for the disposal, for, excuse me, the disposal of refuse by imposing a waste disposal and collection fee of $300 for calendar year 2014. You've heard reading by title of item 6E. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6E pass reading by title. Second. On the question. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 6F, reading by title, file of the council number 6, 2014, an ordinance, amending file of the council number 145 of 2007, entitled an ordinance, renaming the emergency and municipal services tax, EMST, to local service tax, LST, and by imposing a withholding of $52 for the calendar year 2014. You've heard reading by title of item 6F. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6F pass reading by title. Second. On the question, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. 6G reading by title, file of the council number 7, 2014, an ordinance, amending file of the council number 17, 2012, as amended, entitled Establishing a Registration Program for residential rental properties requiring all owners of residential rental properties to designate an agent for service of process and prescribing duties of owners, agents, and occupants, directing the designation of agents, establishing fees for the costs associated with the registration of rental property, and prescribing penalties for violations by amending Section 9 fees to include the increases in the annual rental registration fee to $50 per unit and the annual permit fee to $150 per site. 
You've heard reading by title of item 6G. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6G pass reading by title. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it and so moved. This is read prior to um, seventh order. I just want to mention that um, the request for resumes from people being appointed under um, seventh order have been received from all those that are um, being mentioned. Seventh order, 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 3, 2014, appointment of Linda Abley, 906 Skyview Drive, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505, to the position of Executive Director of the Office of Economic and Community Development, effective January 6, 2014. As Chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of Item 7A. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Brody? Yes. Mr. Lawson? Yes. Mr. Thorne? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 4, 2014, appointment of Carl Graziano, 418 Wilbur Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18508, to the position of Police Chief, effective January 6, 2014. As Chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question, roll call please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loskin? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. 7C for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 5, 2014, appointment of Frank Swetnicki, 2900 Pittston Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505, to the position of IT Manager, effective January 6, 2014. As Chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of Item 7C. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare Item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. 7D, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 6, 2014, Appointment of Wayne Beck, 105 Yesu Drive, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505, to the position of City Treasurer, effective January 6, 2014, to replace Christopher Boland. As Chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of Item 7D. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7D legally and lawfully adopted. 7E for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 7, 2014, <coughs> appointment of Patrick Hinton, 319 Prospect Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18505, to the position of Director of the Department of Licensing, Inspections, and Permits, effective January 6, 2014, to replace Mark Seitzinger. As Chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of Item 7E. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare Item 7E legally and lawfully adopted. 7F, for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 8, 2014, appointment of Eugene Hickey, Esquire, 20 Ridgeview Drive, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, to the position of General Counsel to the Office of Economic and Community Development, effective January 6, 2014, to replace Michael O'Brien, Esquire. As Chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of Item 7F. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7F legally and lawfully adopted. 7G for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 9, 2014, appointment of Dennis Gallagher, 311 Patterson Avenue, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, 
to the position of Director of the Department of Public Works, effective January 6, 2014, to replace Mark Dewar. As Chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of Item 7G. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7G legally and lawfully adopted. 7H for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 10, 2014, appointment of Patrick DeSarno, 606 Hampton Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, to the position of Acting Fire Chief, effective January 6, 2014, to replace Thomas Davis. As Chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of item 7H. Second. On the question. Yes, on the question. Um, I know we went over this in caucus, but I still have questions about this. Um, I just, I, I, I'm worried that we might be, I could be wrong, but, and this is just a question, um, incurring costs, because from what I understand, if Mr. DeSarno is the acting fire chief, and he was formerly the lieutenant, then he has to vacate that position, and then there's a ripple effect throughout the department. So in the caucus, it was said that we would be saving $50,000 because we're not using that for the fire chief. But I still have questions as to, I mean, I'd actually like to see that. And, and that's my question. My other concern is um, Mr. DeSarno was in the bargaining unit. And I just wonder, my, my question is, how can a member of the bargaining unit discipline or manage other members of the bargaining unit? You know, this is nothing, my questions aren't anything against Mr. DeSarno. I think he'll be a great fire chief. I'm just questioning the process of it all. And, and I still have questions on that. If, uh, <coughs> to respond? I, I'm not quite sure, but if I'm not mistaken, as uh, over the past year or so, as uh, Chief Graziano was acting, he was still a member of the FOP also. Right, but I think this is different because this is at the beginning of an appointment. It's not like somebody got sick or you're appointing an acting fire chief because someone has to go on leave. You know, my other, my other question is how long will this go on for? You know, how long will he be acting? You know, these are concerns and questions that I have that, you know, I'm not comfortable with this in, until we get answers from the administration on that. I, w I would just say that w it's as Mr. Lasco mentioned, it's almost the exact same scenario that played out within the police department where you had an acting chief um, run the department. And I believe Chief Graziano was acting for close to two years, I, I would, would guess. Um, and he, he remained a member of the bargaining unit. And by all accounts, Chief Graziano has done an outstanding job um, while being a member of the bargaining unit. Um, chief DeSarno already, only a few weeks into the job, is already um, beginning to, to make light of things that haven't been out in the public before. Um, I, I know there was an article in the paper just a few days ago that he's fighting for, you know, for, for the residents of the city trying to get PP&L to, to put some pressure on them to have faster response times. Um, and like it was mentioned, if there was a faster response time, maybe there wouldn't have been as much damage in, in the West Granton fire on Price Street. Um, I, I have full confidence in, in Pat DeSarno and, and, and in the process as well. And, and this is something that I know myself, Mr. Loscombe and Mr. McGough thought would be a problem with the mayor's proposal of a huge cut to the fire chief's salary, that by doing that, you make the job that nobody within the current Scranton Fire Department would be able to take without taking a substantial pay cut. Um, unfortunately, that proposal was vetoed and the budget that Mr. Doherty, Mrs. Evans and Mr. Joyce wanted became law. So that's where we are and personally I would much rather a fire chief from our department that already knows some of the inner workings than somebody from outside that, um, that, that doesn't. So I, I fully support this, um, this appointment of, of Pat DeSarno. I, I know he'll do a great job and um, yeah, you know, that's why I support right. it. I, I'm not. I'm not questioning. I'm not questioning Mr. Desarno. I agree with Mr. Rogan. I think he'll do a fine job. I think he's doing a fine job. I, all I'm questioning is the process that this, that what's being done. That's what I'm questioning. I think there's 
you know, it opens up a can of worms. And well, I'm just not comfortable, you know, just... I think for the time I, being, we're right. filling the position with a qualified person um, un until some issues are resolved. Uh, and again, there may be some legal issues on a reduction of the, the pay, um, having ramifications on, on three chiefs that are retired now. Will their pay be reduced, their pension be reduced to that $50,000 uh, pay? I mean, there, there, there's a lot of implications here, but uh, I, I think having someone that's been on the job for, for 25 years and, and knows the inner workings of the fire department, um, at this point, it's our best option because I, I don't know where we're gonna get somebody for $50,000. Sure, you know, a lot of people say, I'll volunteer to do it. But, you know, you have to know the demographics of this area to do the job. And, and it, it, it's, you know, in your profession, it's like an acting principal coming up to, from, from one of the schools to, to do the job. To right. it's, point and again, May I address the, the, right. the process to yeah. just a, a moment? The, to me, the alternative was to leave the position unfilled, which I don't think would be in, to the benefit of anyone. And while it may not be a perfect situation, while there may be some flaws in, in dealing with it, I, I, I do believe that the process was the best available option at this time. I've, I've been told that there, that if there is an adequate replacement found, you know, if someone that can fill the job at this salary, that it will be done. But until that time, we do need somebody to act in that position. And as Mr. Loscom has said, it's it does require someone who is familiar with the city of Scranton and with the process that is in place. And so, again, while it may not be perfect, I do think that it is something that is beneficial at this time to do. Uh, I, I just, I, Mike, sorry, Joe, go ahead. I would just like that. I, I, I'm, I'm comfortable with this because it's, to me it's very similar than the appointment of uh, Chief Graziano. Um, if this position wasn't filled, the mayor, the mayor could appoint Mr. DeSarno and the council would have no vote on it. I would like to uh, vote on this to show our support for the chief. Um, and uh, like I said, I, I, the comparison to Chief Graziano was very, very accurate, I think. I don't, I don't know that it is. And, I, and again, I support the chief. I support Pat DeSarno. I just have questions about the process and whether or not this is going to incur costs because of the ripple effect throughout the department. Um, Pat DeSarno was a lieutenant. Now he's the acting fire chief. There'll have to be an acting lieutenant and so on and so forth. So, I mean, there's just, I have questions that I'm just not comfortable with this appointment. It, not the appointment, I should say, but the process. Anyone else on the question? Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Gone? No. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7H legally and lawfully adopted. 7i for consideration by the committee on rules for adoption resolution number 11 2014 appointment of david bolzoni 2187 port royal road clark summit pennsylvania 18411 to the position of business administrator effective january 6 2014 to replace gina mcandrew as chair for the committee on rules i recommend final passage of item 7i second on the question uh, yes, on the question, we did receive um, a letter from the administration because uh, David Bolzoni does live in Clark Summit, but he has six months to move within the city, just so everyone is aware if anybody was curious about that. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscom? Yes. Mr. Gone? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7I legally and lawfully adopted. 
7J for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 12, 2014, appointment of Rebecca McMullen, 1101 Grandview Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18509, to the position of Director of Human Resources, effective January 6, 2014, to replace Stephanie Davis. As Chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of Item 7J. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare item 7J legally and lawfully adopted. 7K for consideration by the Committee on Rules for Adoption, Resolution Number 13, 2014, appointment of Jason A. Shrive, Esquire, 1803 Academy Street, Scranton, Pennsylvania, 18504, to the position of City Solicitor, effective January 6, 2014, to replace Paul Kelly, Esquire. As Chair for the Committee on Rules, I recommend final passage of Item 7K. Second. On the question. Roll call, please. Mr. Wexler? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Gaughan? Yes. Mr. McGough? Yes. I hereby declare Item 7K legally and lawfully adopted. Is there any other business? If not, take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.